Okay, good evening, everybody. Let me explain what I'm going to do this evening. I'm going to talk about Joseph and his brothers. And uh, I do it in a very uh, casual manner, as in I speak very freely. And, uh, and this is the way we learn. And I would also like you to ask questions if you do not understand what I say. I know that you are muted and so you cannot speak. But after the lesson, during the break, you can always ask me questions and I'm, I'll be happy to answer you. So today, this uh, I'm going to talk about Joseph and I need to talk about the background of Joseph, yeah? his family. As you remember, Joseph has a family and his father was Jacob. And uh, you all know the story of Jacob. He had a very difficult life and uh, he started very badly uh, because of his lies to his father, trying to get the blessing from his brother Esau. And then Esau, after knowing that Jacob lied to Isaac to get the blessing, Esau wanted to kill Jacob and Jacob had to run away. So you look at this map, this map shows the root of uh, Jacob. Look at the red, the red line. He was from Bathsheba, staying with Isaac, and he had to run away all the way to Haran. And that's where he met his cousin, Laban. Stayed there for many, many years. Got married to Leah and, and Rachel. And then, then he came back from Haran all the way back to Canaan, right? And where is Haran today? Haran today is part of Turkey. So can you imagine, you know, in those days they have to travel on foot. So up from, the, from Canaan all the way to Turkey, that's a long way off, yeah? About a few hundred, kilometer, maybe about around 500 kilometer. Yeah. And then it's a difficult journey to make. And then, uh, and then in Haran, he had a difficult life, trick, tricked by the cousin to marry both the daughters and work many, many years for the cousin. And finally, he was on the way back to Canaan. And so this is a map showing the route that Jacob and family and of course, with his 12 son, with his uh, uh, sons, including Joseph, making his way back from the north to Penuel, to Shechem, Bethel, and finally settling in Hebron. Right? So let me read to you scripture. Uh, Joseph uh, from Genesis chapter 37, 1 to 14. Genesis chapter 37. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. So Joseph is the one who will report to, his, to their father the bad things that his brothers have done. So a spy. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than any of his sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made a richly ornamental robe for him. And his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them. They hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Yeah, so, and then you go on, you read about Joseph's dream. Yeah, yeah, he dreamt that there were 12 sheaves and each uh, sheaf is a bundle of grains, stocks of grain. And then each of his brothers have a sheaf and all their sheaves bow down to Joseph's sheaves. Yeah? And he also dreamed that 11 stars 
sun and moon. And they all bow down to Joseph. So this made the brothers very angry. Yeah. So let me go on yeah, to the next slide. So there you go. You look at this picture. Uh, the sheaves are what you see here. All the straws of grains. Yeah. And the one that is standing up is Joseph's bundle of stalks of grains. And you look at all the other stalks of uh, bundles of grain. They're all bowing down to Joseph's stock of grain. All the 11 other bundles are bowing down to Joseph's bundle, showing that the 11 brothers are all bowing to Joseph. And then the second dream was that the 11 stars and the sun and the moon all bowing down to Joseph. So that made the brothers very angry. Uh, they knew what the dream meant. It means that one day, all the 11 brothers, including the father and mother, will bow down to Joseph. And they hated Joseph for, for this. Yeah. And uh, so, and if you read on, uh, in verse 9, sorry, verse 12, let me read to you verse 12 of chapter 37. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I am going to send you to them. So you look at this map. They, are, they were in Hebron. And the brothers have gone to Shechem in the north and to Dothan further up. So Jacob sent Joseph from Hebron to go and look for the brothers to see how are they doing with the flock of sheep and goats that they sent, that they have been uh, pasturing uh, Jacob's flock of sheep. And then to come back to report to Jacob. Yeah. So, uh, so what Joseph did was from Hebron, he went all the way to north, Shechem. And then there, he was told that the brothers and the flock of sheep had gone up to Dotan. So he went up north to uh, Dotan here. Yeah. So altogether, about 105 kilometers. And of course, you know the story, what happened in Dotan. Uh, the brothers seized Joseph and threw him into a pit. And so later on, sold Joseph to the slave traders. And Joseph had to uh, travel all the way, captured by the slave traders, all the way down to Egypt. So can you imagine, he was on an excursion. He's supposed to be enjoyable. The father has sent him to <clears throat> look for his brothers in north, in, Do in Shechem and Dothan. And then he ended up being sold as a slave to the Midianite slave traders. And, and the slave traders brought him as a captured slave all the way from Canaan to Egypt. Very unusual story. Yeah. So I would like to show you uh, this uh, video, and and uh, the video will show the early life of Joseph and how Jose and how Jacob treated Joseph with favoritism. And I want you to. To note which part of the video shows Jacob's favoritism towards Joseph. Very important point that I wish to emphasize in this lesson. So I will now go to the video and you watch the video. Jacob had 12 sons, six by his first wife Leah, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. Two sons by Leah's maid, Zilpah. Gad. And Asher. And two sons were by his second wife, Rachel's maid, Bilhah. 
Dan, and Naftali. After years of not having children of her own, Rachel, Jacob's first love, gave birth to Joseph, who became his favorite. Benjamin, his twelfth son, was born later. One day, when Joseph returned from the fields, he reported to his father that his brothers had been doing evil things, which only fanned the fire of their jealousy. Except for Benjamin, the brothers already disliked Joseph because he was their father's favorite son. To symbolize his favored position in the family, Jacob had made Joseph a beautiful coat of long sleeves, the coat of many colors. In such a coat, Joseph could not do manual labor as his brothers did. They wore only the drab, sleeveless coats of common shepherds, while Joseph's long coat was a constant reminder that their father loved Joseph more than he did them. Their dislike grew to hatred. Throughout history, Joseph has been referred to as the dreamer, and dreams in those ancient biblical times had far more significance than they do today. Many people believed it was one important way in which the supernatural world communicated with us, a way that God talked to people. This was extremely important in the life of Joseph. One day, he was out in the field with his brothers when he had a dream. In Genesis 37, 6, he told his brothers, Listen to this dream that I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly, my sheaf rose and stood upright. Then your sheaves gathered round it and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brothers said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? And so they also despised him because of his dreams and his words. <laughs> then Joseph had another dream in which his brothers all bowed down to him. And when he told it to them, their hatred grew to rage. <laughs> So you saw the video, and of course, the part about favoritism is when the father gave Joseph a rainbow color coat. And all the other brothers do not have such a beautiful coat as Joseph. Let's see how Jacob favors Joseph and not the other brothers. And all the other brothers were very angry and hated Joseph because he was favored by the father. So this is the point that I would like to make further comment. Favoritism gives rise to jealousy and hatred, like what you saw of the brothers. They were all jealous of Joseph and they hated Joseph. And that gave rise to violence. Yeah? Violence because later on in the, in the story, you all know, they threw Joseph into the pit and wanted to kill Joseph. And later on, instead of killing Joseph, they sold him to the Midianite slave traders. Yeah. So this favoritism is something that is common, but not a good thing. You look at uh, the patriarchs. Isaac favored Esau. Rebecca favored Jacob. And what happened in that story? Because Isaac was going to bless Esau with the best blessing, Rebecca and Jacob came out with deception to trick Isaac to bless Jacob with the best blessing. Jacob pretended to be Esau and went to Isaac and asked Isaac to bless him with the best blessing. And later on, Jacob, uh, Esau found out that Jacob had pretended to be him and got the best blessing. Esau wanted to kill Jacob and Jacob had to run away to Haran. Not good. Right? Uh, favoritism gave rise to jealousy and hatred, which gave rise to violence. Yeah. Jacob favored Rachel and not Leah. So when Jacob went to Haran, escaped to Haran, he loves Rachel, but didn't love Leah. And the two wives start to fight. So again, there was jealousy and hatred. Uh, Leah was jealous of Rachel because Jacob loves Rachel and Leah hated 
this favoritism of Jacob for Rachel. Yeah, and even the children started to fight. Leah's children against Rachel's children, and so on and so forth. So again, favoritism gave rise to jealousy and hatred and violence. Jacob favored Joseph among the sons. There you are. You saw in the video just now. Yeah, because of Jacob's favoritism to Joseph, the brothers all hated Joseph and they committed violence against Joseph. Yeah. So it, it is a bad thing to practice favoritism. Yeah. And uh, but it is very common. You see it in in uh, Old Testament uh, patriarchs in their lives. There is a lot of favoritism. Yeah. And the favoritism gave rise to bad endings, bad events in their lives. And uh, so we read on, brothers threw Joseph into a pit. Let me read a bit of this. Uh, chapter 37, 15 to 36. So verse 15, when, when Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here. The man answered, I heard them say, let's go to Dotan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dotan. But they saw him in the distance and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns. They are the pits, yeah? pits in the ground and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let not, let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the desert, but don't lay a hand on him, Reuben said. And so and so forth. And then we read on. Yeah, the brothers were all undecided. Someone to kill him, others do not want to kill him because we are brothers. We are of the same blood. You know, let's not have our brother's blood on our hands. Yeah. So what they did eventually is they threw him into the system. And then when the Midianites came, his brother sold him to the Midianites in verse 28. So when the media so when the Midianite merchants came by. His brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, the boy isn't there. Where can I, where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornamented robe back to their father and said, we found this. Examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. So they pretended that Joseph was eaten up by wild animals because his uh, coat is all uh, blooded by the blood of an animal, pretending that it is Joseph's blood. So they showed the, the coat full uh, blooded by animal's blood to the father, Jacob, and said, is this Joseph's coat? And the father saw the coat full of uh, blood, imagine the worst, that his son has been eaten up by the animal. And he cried, cried. Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, in mourning, in mourning will I go down to the grave to my son. So his father wept for him. See, this is a terrible tragedy. I mean, no father would want to find that his child has been killed. No father. And Jacob had to go through this experience, thinking that his favorite son, Joseph, has been killed by a wild animal. And he bore this grief for many years until they brought him to Egypt and he saw Joseph again. In Egypt. So can you imagine the tragedy and the grief, the sadness Jacob went through in his life? Yeah. So it's a terrible thing. Huh? And uh, let's watch again 
what happened in the video and uh, especially the part where you see that the sorrow Jacob had to go through at the end of the video, it shows deep grief on the part of a father whose son has been killed. Let's watch the video. David, Shimon! So it was that when they were out tending the flock one morning and they saw Joseph approaching in his elegant coat, they said, let's kill him and get rid of him once and for all. But Reuben, the eldest brother, argued, no, let's not kill him. Shed no blood. Why don't we just throw him into this dry well here in the wilderness? Reuben's plan was that when the brothers had all gone, he would come back and rescue Joseph and return him to his father. So that's what they did. They grabbed Joseph and tore off his coat and threw him down the deep pit. Sometime later, when Reuben was away, the other brothers saw a caravan of Ishmaelites approaching. And Judah said, what's the profit in slaying our brother? After all, he's our own flesh. Why don't we just sell him to the Ishmaelites? They all agreed and hauled Joseph out of the well and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. Then they decided to cover up their crime by killing a goat and dipping Joseph's beautiful coat in the blood to make it look as though Joseph had been killed by a wild animal. When the brothers showed the bloody coat to Jacob, he was convinced that his beloved Joseph had been devoured by a wild beast. As the Bible tells us in Genesis 37, 34. Then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. Thus his father wept for him. So you see, the end result of favoritism. All this because the brothers hated Joseph because he was favored by Jacob. They make up a story that Joseph has been killed by a wild animal and Jacob has to bear the grief that his son has died. Yeah. So, you read in scripture, if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. So, scripture tells us that if you show favoritism, you are committing a sin, right? So let me go through a few important points. Why did the brothers want to kill Joseph? Because they were jealous of Joseph, Jacob, favorite son, and they hated Joseph. Yeah, especially when Joseph tells them, one day, you, my brothers, and my parents will bow down to me and honor me. Yeah. So I would like you to reflect now. 
Were we victims of favoritism or were we the favored? Yeah. A very important point that you like I like to you to think about is have you been victimized before? Because other people were favored and you are not the favored, and therefore you are uh, not well looked after. Or were you the favored one? Do we practice favoritism in the family? You may be a father, or you may be a grandfather or great grandfather, and you have a family. Do you practice favoritism in your family? Do you like some and do not like others in uh, who are your children? Yeah. Do we practice favoritism in the workplace? Do we like uh, one staff and we do not like the other staff? And the one staff that we like, we give special treatment, good treatment. But the other staff that we don't like, we give bad treatment. When you were young, were you jealous and hateful of your sibling who was the favorite? Were you jealous and hateful of your colleague who was the favorite? Favoritism leads to jealousy, hatred. Right? And let me tell you my own story. I was a, I am the eldest boy in my family. I've got three sisters after me. And uh, I was the favorite person. My grandfather gave me the best food. Give me good milk to drink, cream milk. And of course, I, I didn't realize that I was favored. I was uh, a boy. And whatever good food that come to me, I just take it for granted. And I just consume the good food, have the best things for me. And I, I was oblivious that I was the favorite child until I was an adult. Not too long ago, many, uh, some years ago, when suddenly my sister said to the whole family that I am the favorite child, that I have been favored, and they do not have the good food, but I have the good food. And I was very surprised that after all these years, this happened when we were children. You know, uh, very young children in, in primary school. And, they and she remembered what happened. And she hated me for it because I was favorite. So favoritism is not a small thing that we can just uh, ignore and carry on practicing in, in the family or at the workplace. It remains in the mind of the children for many years to come. And they will hate you and remember that you are the favorite person. So I want you to remember, because this is an important lesson for us. It is found in the life of Jacob, in the life of Joseph, yeah? in the, our patriarch's life. And it is there for us to learn important lessons that we do not practice favoritism in our family. And we look at the families that they went through, how our patriarchs, their family had went through very difficult, a lot of difficulty because of favoritism. And it is to teach us that we should not practice favoritism in our family. So let me move on to the uh, further comments. Uh, so why did brothers not kill Joseph? The brothers were persuaded by Reuben not to kill their own brother Joseph, but to just throw Joseph into a pit. And the brothers sold Joseph as a slave to the Ishmaelites. The brothers went back to Jacob, the father, to tell them that Joseph had been devoured by a wild animal by showing Joseph's blooded coat. Jo Jacob was very sad and refused to be comforted. So that is an important point that uh, because of all this favoritism, Jacob ended up very sad. Yeah? His son has deceived him into believing that Joseph has been uh, eaten up by an, a wild animal. And mm -hmm. Joseph refused to be comforted. Yeah. So spiritual lesson for us today is that uh, many parents are guilty of practicing favoritism with their children. Now, this, could be, this could range from siding with one particular child in arguments and 
also seen as punishing one child more than others for no obvious reason. So you see here, yeah, children are, uh, start fighting, crying, because maybe the boy is favored and the younger daughter is not favored. So the daughter starts to cry because the boy has more toys, uh, better treatment, and the girl do not have anything of treated badly or scolded even by the parents. Yeah. So marriage counselor also uh, advise against uh, uh, favoritism. Uh, this marriage counselor explained that par parental favoritism can be detrimental and have long-lasting effects on children. Issues of favoritism do not go away if they are unaddressed. Many adults remember how they were unfavored when they were children, just like my family. <laughs> yeah. When my sister told me that I was a favorite child, we were already adults, but she remembered. Yeah. This affects their sense of self and their relationship in adult life. Yes, it affected our relationship because she looks at me with suspicion that I always get the good things from my grandfather and from my parents, whereas they don't get the same good things from our parents. So they have a desire to fight back. Yeah. They always have a desire to fight back. And uh, so that's bad. Yeah? So what we have to do is that we have to deal with the issue. Yeah? If you have favoritism in your family, we must take a step back, evaluate our emotions. And if it is true that we favor one child over another, then we have to speak to the child that is less favored and, and repair the damage, perhaps even to apologize and acknowledge how you have caused hurt and to make changes. That's important. Yeah? Do not let it slip by or become defensive, but we have to address the issue because it has a lasting effect on these children. Yeah? It, it will, we will bring with them that they are less favored, they have been ill-treated all the way to adulthood and they will hate the parents. So that's, that's not good. Yeah? Remember the story of, uh, uh, of uh, Jacob and uh, yeah, it's very bad relationship in the family. Yeah? It is the same in a company. Okay? Here, uh, this is a real life example of one particular staff in the company that was enjoying favoritism by the boss. The boss praised this company Ling for being very bright, for being very good, and all the other members of the company felt left out and they felt very uh, demoralized because Ling was the one praised by the boss and all the rest were not praised. And the rest of the people, uh, they felt dejected and slowly they began to leave the, leave the company. And in the end, Ling also left the company. So favoritism is not good. Yeah. Uh, uh, even if you have good, good staff, you must treat staff fairly. Yeah. Uh, don't overpraise a good staff. Yeah. You can say, yes, he's a good staff, and therefore he married a good, uh, good salary. But the rest of you are also team members. And if you work just as hard and are just as motivated, you will also get promoted. You will also get good salary. So there, is, there must be encouragement to the rest who are not performing as well. And so this way, you have to maintain sort of a good relationship in the company. Yeah. Uh, it's very common in the company where... Uh, one or two staff are praised and rewarded very well because the boss likes the one or two staff. And the other staff are scolded and, and, uh, and uh, resented and uh, told that they are no good. Of course, the other staff will be very unhappy and they will look for another job and leave the company. And that's not good. Favoritism leading to uh, 
conflicts in relationship in the company and, le and leading to uh, staff leaving the company. And the company will then uh, become short-handed. Yeah. So um, I'm not going to ask you to share now, but let's take a five minutes break uh, or toilet break. And we will start the second half of the session in five minutes time. All right. So uh, just go for a five minutes break and we will start the second half in five minutes time. Okay. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Uh... While the uh, lesson was uh, going on, there were quite a few people that uh, come in. All right. Um, not to worry, this uh, lesson is being recorded. So if you get in touch with uh, Reverend Go, you will get a recording of, uh, of the lecture. Okay. For some of you who came in late, all right, uh, you can avail yourself to that. Just get in touch with Reverend Go. He'll give you the link. Okay. Hello, everybody. Good to see you all. Hey. Glad you all can come in. All right. Uh, anybody want to say anything? All right. And you, I've got five minutes. Quick sharing. Anybody want to share anything now? Something you learn? All right, well, uh, Brother Limping, take a little break. Anyone? Okay. Uh, just uh, unmute yourself, and then uh, you can uh, just share a little bit. Anybody? Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. I've uh, set the, the unmuting uh, for you all to unmute yourself. Go ahead. Can okay. You... Yes, uh, uh... I wanted to 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 share uh, something about the lesson and uh, something I like is about the vision. Uh, when the professor was teaching, I was thinking much about the Joseph vision because it's like in nowadays also in the church as a leader, even in the family, sometimes you you find somebody has a vision to do something, but uh people around are not understanding his vision you know i remember when i was in the church when i introduced my vision to be a missionary to my 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 mentor my pastor so friends around me were not happy with me was asking me question about how are you going to make it and uh, so it was not easy so sometimes vision uh we need to be very careful when somebody introduces his vision or where somebody was uh, sharing his vision so maybe god is can use him in a different way so i like that part of a vision uh, how jo joseph was able to to uh, to tell people it was not just uh, people to bow down here uh, before him as a king but it was also God's uh, way to deliver all the family. So I'm very happy about that. And uh, I'm happy because I, the people that are invited are here. Uh, Lu Lucy from Kenya, but is living in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So Lucy, mm -hmm. I'm happy. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> you know, God could give us a vision but sometimes, you know, it takes what you call a process. So uh, Joseph needed time to mature. Uh, he needed to be tested. He needed to be broken of his pride. You remember when he had a vision, he was proud about it, you know, and and uh, and uh, the, the father didn't help in certain ways. And so uh, the Lord has to bring him through a process. And that process is God's uh, pur pur purpose in our life to make us, first of all, to be like our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and then the, to do that we, he, which he had for us. So to be reminded, yes, we might have a vision, we tell it to others, but then we had to be very careful 
as God began to mature us, mature us, test us, break us up, all right? And uh, to, to many uh, trials and tribulation and suffering. And we will see later on uh, from uh, the teaching, uh, the various things that Joseph had to go through, all right? His pride, for example, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, life is uh, testing. When we get a primary school, we got testing. You get from one grade to another. We go to secondary school, there's testing. You go to college, there's testing and so on. And there are spiritual testing in each one of our life. The purpose of it is so that we can pass those uh, testing time. That's God's goal for us, to make us to be like our Savior Jesus Christ. And we pass them, we mature, and uh, and then the Lord will then use us in and through us to use us like a, a potter with a clay. All right? The, the, we are clay in God's hands. So God is melting us, molding us, and making us after his own desire. All right, that's a good uh, thought to think about. And uh, yes, we share our vision. But then there's always a community uh, where God works in our heart and our life in and through the community. Uh, then to, to uh, test us, to solidify us, to mature us, to make us what we ought to be. And then our Lord began to uh, work in and through us. All this to his glory. All right. And I think... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Trina Limping will work more on that. That's why there's going to be three more classes on that. Okay, are you ready now, Brother Limping? Okay, so this lesson, we carry on with the uh, story. Joseph sold, uh, Joseph was sold to the slave traders, and yeah, from a happy excursion to visit his brothers. Uh, he became a slave. And uh, the journey ended up all the way to Egypt. So it's a very unusual story yeah, that God has allowed all these things to happen in Joseph's life. And uh, so I want to explain a bit here. Uh, because from God's perspective, he has ordered events in Joseph's life so that Joseph will go to Egypt, subsequently to be prime minister, and therefore save Jacob and family from the famine in the years to come. So that's God's plan for Joseph. Yeah? But from Joseph's perspective, he was, full, he was full of distress and fear and treachery of his brothers because he has been thrown into the pit. And is he, going, is he going to die in there? And then suddenly he found himself being taken out of the pit and sold as a slave and went to Egypt. And, in, and as a slave in Captain Potiphar's house, he was framed by the wife for uh, sexually assaulting the wife and thrown into prison. So Joseph's perspective is one of distress, fear, and suffering. God doesn't tell him, Joseph, I'm going to send you as a slave, and you're going to be thrown in prison, and later on, you're going to be a prime minister to rescue Jacob and family from the famine. God doesn't say that to Joseph. Yeah? So, the spiritual lesson for us is, We may be encountering trials and tribulations now. Yeah, we, I'm sure you all have your own uh, difficulties. You face conflicts in your family, in your uh, work environment. You face conflicts in your community. Uh, you face many conflicts and many trials and many tribulations. Yeah? And you do not understand why is it so? I mean, perhaps you can understand at, the, at that level, but 
going forward, what's going to happen? But you see, in Joseph's case, God has a big purpose. Subsequently, for the good of Joseph and his family, to save Jacob from the famine that is to come. So in the same way, all, of, all our lives, we encountered troubles and tribulations just like Joseph. Yeah. And in many years down the road, we realize that there is a purpose that God has put us through. But God doesn't tell us now. Why are we going through that difficulty? That's what Reverend Go say. God trains Joseph and break him down to get rid of all his pride, get rid of all his self-confidence, so that Joseph will now be obedient and trust God, have faith in God. Same with us. We have our pride. We have our own self-confidence. We depend on ourselves. And we realize that based on our own strength, we cannot overcome the trouble. We have to cry out to God for help. And God will listen to us when we are humble, when we are, when our heart is broken, and then we cry out to God, God will then listen to us and then save us. Same purpose that God puts us through. Right? So do not be surprised why you are going through so much trouble. But remember the story of Joseph. Yeah. So if we go on to the story of Joseph, God blessed Joseph. Yeah? When he went to Egypt, he was in Captain Potiphar's household, having, having born, been bought by Captain Potiphar to be a slave. Then he became the chief slave. He became the chief slave. And then Captain Potiphar's wife noticed Joseph. Good-looking young man. And then uh, what happened next? So let us watch the video how uh, Captain Potiphar's wife tried to uh, seduce Joseph, tried to attract Joseph to be her lover. And what happened uh, to Joseph? Did he uh, happily agree or did he disagree? Let us watch the video. What Jacob did not know, however, was that Joseph was not dead. The Ishmaelites had taken him down into Egypt and sold him to Potiphar, the captain of Pharaoh's guard, to be a slave in his house. God, however, continued to watch over Joseph, as we learn from Genesis 39-2. The Lord was with Joseph, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight, and he made him overseer of his house, and put him in charge of all that he had. The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing was upon all that he had in house and field. Joseph was handsome and good-looking, and after a time, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But Joseph refused and said to his master's wife, Look, with me here, my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything he has in my hand. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except yourself, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? But so you see the video? Joseph was young, good-looking, and attracted Potiphar's wife. And then Potiphar's wife propositioned Joseph. You know? Your master's wife purposes propositioning you. And what did Joseph do? Did he say yes? Yeah. No, he didn't. He said no. He said no. 
Most people, the ordinary people will say, why not? If my master's wife likes me, she is going to give me all the favors I will have. If I give in to her, accept her favors and lie with her, she's going to give me a lot of good treatment, money, wealth, and material things. Why not? And nobody will know. She is going to keep quiet. I'm going to keep quiet. And I'll be very happy. Right? That will be the idea. But not Joseph. Why not? Why not? Hmm? And uh, I will come to the reason why not. But let us look at why God blessed Joseph. Because Joseph was obedient and faithful to God. Yeah, you notice that when he was thrown into the pit, when he was sold as a slave and worked in Captain Potiphar's household, and then he was thrown into prison, you read scripture, he was always very faithful to God. He did not depart from God or say, God, why are you so unfair? Why did you put me into all this suffering as a slave, as a prisoner? I'm not going to have you as my God anymore. Why should I? You don't bless me. You don't bless me. I'm not. I'm going to leave you. Did Joseph do that? No, he did not. Joseph remained obedient and faithful to God. And that is God's test for Joseph. I put you through all this suffering. Are you going to be faithful to me? Are you going to cry out to me for mercy and protection? Are you? Or are you going to run away from me? No. Joseph was still faithful and obedient. And therefore, God gave Joseph success in everything he did. Even as a slave, he became the chief slave in Captain Potiphar's house. He was looking after all the other slaves. He was the leader of the slave because God blessed him. And Captain Potiphar saw that God blessed Joseph and therefore made him the chief slave. Yeah. So from a menial slave, he became attendant to Potiphar. And then after that, he became overseer of Potiphar's house. See? So he climbed up, promoted, because God was with him. And what happened? Huh? Because Joseph was faithful to God. How do we know? How do we know that Joseph was obedient and faithful to God? Because when Potiphar's wife was propositioning Joseph to lie with her, he said, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? His reply, Joseph replied to Mrs. Potiphar, when Mrs. Potiphar propositioned Joseph, come and lie with me, Joseph said to her, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? In his mind, in Joseph's mind, is that he must not sin against God. Lying with my master's wife is adultery, and I have and I will be sinning. And that is what he's afraid of. See, Joseph was very conscious of God's law, sin, and actions. And uh, he do not want to break God's law. He does not want to sin against God. He know what things would please God and he would do those things that would please God and he would turn away from those things which would anger God, like sinning, committing adultery, and sleeping with uh, his master's wife. That would displease God and bring punishment on Joseph. And that is what we must learn. Very important. We must do things which please God and turn away from things which is a sin against God because God will punish us and we will find that our lives will be in trouble. Yeah? So Joseph did the right thing yeah, because he remembered uh, that he must not sin against God. So God, what are the spiritual lessons that we can learn? God can also bless us in our station in life, whether we are rich or whether we are poor. God can still bless us. Yeah? We have to 
refrain from sinning, do not sin, be conscious that sinning against God will bring adverse uh, consequences in our lives. Adverse consequences means there will be trouble in our lives if we sin against God. We are more fearful. Uh, we are more fearful of adverse reactions from our bosses and authorities for wrongful acts. Yeah, sometimes we did something wrong. Yeah, and we tell a lie up to the boss. We didn't do it. We lie to our boss. We didn't do this wrong thing. We lie to our boss. Because we are fearful that our boss will punish us. But we are not fearful that God will punish us for, for telling a lie. That is the trouble. And that is the trouble why we face many other troubles in our life. Because God knows that you have told a lie. You have sinned against God. And God will not let you off. You have to learn that lesson. That you cannot tell a lie. Uh, so, but Joseph knew of this lesson. So who does God protect? God protects the righteous. To be righteous, we have to depart from evil and do good. And where is the verse? Uh, we read Psalm 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. Who does the Lord look after? The Lord look after the righteous. Who are the righteous? The righteous are people who do the right things, who do what God wants you to do, who do not tell lies, who do not sin against God, who do good things. They are the righteous. If you tell lies, if you are proud, if you uh, are arrogant, and, and you do not have a heart for people who are poor, you are not righteous. God will not hear you. God will not be attentive to your cry. Because Psalm 34, 15 says, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. He will protect the righteous. He and the righteous are those who do good and depart from evil. So those of you who want who wants to know who is God protecting, you must first be righteous. So Potiphar committed Joseph to imprisonment. Yeah, you read that uh, he was, she was uh, uh, very angry that Joseph denied her, uh, shunned her, even though she wants Joseph to lie with her. Yeah? And Mrs. Potiphar framed Joseph as having molested her. And therefore, Joseph was thrown into prison. But even then, in prison, God blessed Joseph. Joseph became the, the, the head, the chief administrator for the, ward, the, 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 the prison warden. So he looked after all the other prisoners. He became the chief prisoner. Yeah. So, so we see, very interesting. Yeah. Even though he goes through so many setbacks, God was with him. Yeah. He was not wilting away or feeling very gloomy, completely down, gave up hope. No. You look at his line. Every setback, he was either the head of the slaves or the head of the prisoners. Working very hard. Serving God. Or being obedient and faithful to God. Yeah? So what are the spiritual lessons that we learn here? We may go through many difficulties in life. But if God is with us, we have nothing to fear. Yeah. See, Joseph was thrown into the pit. Yeah. He may have died falling into the pit. Yeah. After that, he was sold as a slave. Yeah. And then framed by Mrs. Potiphar.
and thrown into prison. Yet God was with him every moment. Uh, we have uh, all that evidence in Bible for us that God was with him. And we know that God sent Joseph to be a slave in Egypt. Yeah. Uh, we read that in Psalm 105, 17 to 19. And, and he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons till what he foretold came to pass, till the word of the Lord proved him true. So it was God's plan to send Joseph as a slave to Egypt. Yeah. It was God's plan to send Joseph as a slave to Egypt. Not just to send Joseph into Egypt as an ordinary man, but as a slave. The lowest people Why does God do that? Very interesting, huh? You see, Joseph's difficulties were all God. Joseph's difficulties were all God planned and executed. God sent Joseph to be a slave and prisoner in Egypt. And Joseph would foretell the famine. When Pharaoh realized Joseph, God was, was with Joseph, Joseph was made prime minister to avert the suffering of the famine. God's purpose. Egypt and the world would know that there is a God who use a weak slave and prisoner to save them from famine. This was God's praise. This was to God's praise and glory. See, God always used the weak to become strong. Yeah. You look at our Lord Jesus Christ. He is God. But when he came to earth, he came as the son of a carpenter. And he lived among the poor. He was a nobody. He, he, he is not an official. He is not a member of the government. He does not have political authority. But he was just a lowly, ordinary carpenter's son. A weak person. But then, he is God. And even today, we all worship him, God and Savior. We need him to save us. That is God's purpose. He would bring you down to a very low level, humble you, make you go through a lot of trials and difficulties, and everybody can see that you are very weak, you are very at a very low level, very humble, and then he will use you mightily to show to the whole world that you, a weak person, can be strong. Leader, people will listen to you, even though you are a low person and a working class person, that you command the respect many people. That is how God worked in our life. God doesn't use the strong and mighty. Yeah, in, in Bible, huh? From, you look at Abraham's life, uh, Jacob, they are all broken down into, they are become very weak. Yeah? Uh, Abraham went to the promised land and there was a famine. He had to run away to Egypt. And he almost lost Sarah to Pharaoh. So he became very weak. But God used him and became the father of, a, of the new nation, of the chosen people of God. Jacob, very weak, had to run away from uh, Canaan to Haran, away from Esau who was going to attack him and kill him. And then he came back with his family and he established himself as a patriot, as a leader. Yeah. And his son was Joseph, who went to Egypt and saved him from famine. And his son became the prime minister. What was the son's background? He was a slave, a prisoner. 
and he became a prime minister. So all through biblical history, you find that God exalts the weak. God will make you become very weak. You go through a lot of suffering and suddenly God uses you mightily for his work. And that's why all of you, don't worry if you are suffering because all the people in Bible went through that same process. That is how God works. Do not be surprised how come you are uh, facing so much, so many difficulties in your life. Do not be surprised how come you have so many conflicts. Do not be surprised. This is all part of God's work. It is when you are weak, then you are strong. That is how God works. So we notice in Abraham's life, uh, God planned and executed difficulties in the lives of Abraham. He had to journey many months on foot to Canaan. There was famine in Canaan. He had to as, run away from Canaan, flee to Egypt, and he almost lost his wife, Sarah, to Pharaoh. Isaac was sad, having, be de having been deceived by Jacob in giving his best blessing to Jacob, thinking that Jacob was Esau. Jacob, deceived into marrying both Leah and Rachel, worked 14 years for Laban to marry Rachel, and he had to contend with four wives fighting for Jacob's attention. And then in the end, you watch the video, how sad he was when he lost Joseph. Yeah, so he, all these patriots, they went through very difficult life, very difficult life. So why did God place difficulties in their lives? The many difficulties in the lives of the patriots were com compel them to have faith in God to overcome, their, to overcome their circumstances. If their lives were plain sailing, without difficulties, there is no need to have faith in God. If your life is uh, comfortable, you have money, you have good health and strength, uh, you don't have to work because there's plenty of food, you have a big house and, and you have a good family, everybody is happy, you don't need God. You don't need God when you are, everything is going well in your life. So God puts all the trouble in your life to test you uh, whether you will have faith in God. It is when you have difficulty, then you see, you cry out, God help, help me God. Yeah. You see this, and God answers you. And that is why there is so much suffering in believers' life. God is testing us in our life, whether we have faith in Him, whether we will cry out to Him for help. So despite all the difficulties, the patriarchs never left their faith in God. They never say, God, you made me walk from Haran all the way to promised land. Uh, I'm, I'm suffering now. I don't believe in you anymore. I lost Sarah to the Pharaoh. Why didn't you not protect me? I lost faith in you now, God. No. They never left faith in God. And God blessed them. Yeah. So God placed difficulties in life for the same reason. The test is before us. Whether we will exercise faith in God. The test is all these suffering, conflict with my conflict with my uh, my friends, conflict with my my uh, church, conflict with my family, my children, conflict with my wife, uh, and then conflict with my boss, and then we are being oppressed by our boss. Uh, we are tested here and tested there. Many conflicts. And then we have to cry out to God, God help us. God, we, I can't solve all this problem by myself. I need your help. Cry out to God. And God will listen to you and help you. Provided you are the righteous. Yeah? The righteous. You practice righteousness. Do not be over-concerned about your circumstances. 
in life, dear Joseph, be concerned that you have done wrong and offended God. You see, Joseph, the first thing he thinks when he is propositioned by Mrs. Potiphar, he said, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He's afraid of sinning against God. Are we afraid of sinning against God? Or we say, okay, I, I don't mind. I will enjoy lying with my master's wife. Remember, God sees your sin and he will, you will have to make an account of it to him. Many of us worry that we will get into trouble for our misdeeds. Sinning against God is not a big worry for us. Therein lies the difference between Joseph and us. So, we are afraid that we will get into trouble. We tell lies. Oh, I didn't do this. This is not my fault. I didn't do this. I lied. So that the boss will not uh, punish me. But God sees me lying. But to us, it's okay to lie. Everybody is lying. Everybody is lying. So I also lie. Not a big worry. But no. To God, it is a problem. And he will make us account to him for our lives. Okay? So we must take our sins and misdeeds seriously as an affront to God. Telling lies for our boss, it brings dishonor to God. It brings adverse consequences to us when God turns away from us. Yeah, Because you remember the verse in Psalm 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. God looks after the righteous. If we tell lies, if we behave badly, we are not the righteous. God will not look after us. Remember that. Yeah? Because I have also sinned in my life and I was not the righteous because it was a deliberate sin and it was regularly committed and God punished me with a severe illness. And I live to tell you this because it will bring honor and glory to God that do not take our sins lightly. God will want an account of our sins one day. If we do not repent and turn over a leaf, there will be trouble in our life. So when I repented, I told God of my sin. I repented. He saved me. He cured me of cancer. And I praise and glorify God. For he is a loving Heavenly Father. He will listen to us if we genuinely repent of our sin and cry out to him and turn away from our sin and do it no more. Yeah. It is very important. Do not say you have repented and carry on with the sin. Then it is further uh, consequences in your life from God. Yeah. Once you have repented, turn away from the sin and do not commit it anymore. So I praise God and, glor and glorify God that he has listened to me and delivered me from my illness. I praise and glorify him. So lastly, I would like to tell you about this uh, survey where it is very frequent for people in their workplace to lie when their bosses ask them to lie to them. You read here, our survey uh, where there's blue, this blue, uh, blue uh, mark, our survey shows that a staggering 79% of support staff have been asked to invent the truth on behalf of their boss this year. In other words, if the boss, boss asks you to lie, they will lie to protect yeah, jobs yeah, so that they will not be fired by their boss or not lying for the boss. Yeah. 
79% of the staff lie for their boss. Yeah. So question is, if you are put in that position, will and your boss asks you to lie, will you lie? Now, this is just one type of problem that Christians face yeah, in the workplace. There are many other problems. Will we be willing to stand for righteousness? Will we be willing to say, okay, I cannot lie for you, boss. Yeah, I cannot lie for you. And trust God. If, if we are fired from the job, so be it. We are fired from the job. Because we will never know. Yeah. When I was in my previous job, I had very difficult bosses too. And they are very oppressive. Want me to work many long hours and ask me to do a lot of things. Uh, and when I left the job, I resigned from the job. I was so relieved. And it was better for me to resign from the job. And I was without a job, no income. But I was very happy because I was not under tremendous pressure from him. Yeah. And God made, gave me a very good rest. And six months later, God gave me a new job. I did not ask for the job. I was still resting. Then the telephone call came. Uh, Lim Pin, uh, we need uh, you to teach in the university. Can you come and teach in the university? I was very surprised. <laughs> I never applied to the university, but the dean called me. And he knew that I was out of a job. And there was a job for me. God will look after you if you are the righteous. God will look after you. So I praise God for all that he has done for me. And I truly thank him. So I've come to the end of my uh, class. And I would like you to unmute yourself. And maybe instead of breaking you out into breakout room, if you have questions, you can ask questions. And I will be uh, happy to answer you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Loud and clear. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much for the uh, blessing as we learn the lesson from the Joseph, life of the Joseph. The first part, I just want to clarify from the first part. Uh, the main cause of the Joseph suffering is what I understood, what I conclude is due to their father showing the favoritism. Is that right? Yes. In a way, their yes. Father, so you mean to say their brothers are not sinning against the Joseph? The brothers are sinning, yes. Because the favoritism, favoritism that was shown by their father because of the cause of the death, the Joseph he is so much problem, suffering. The yeah. brother plotted against him, conspiratorially, yeah. really they plotted against him. That's right. What I mean to say is that you said that the favoritism, favoritism is the sin and the law breaker. Mm. Law breaker. So it was the, their father who shown the favoritism. So the sinning was committed by their father. Yes. So how come the how come they are um, the brothers we now in the picture? Because their brothers also sin. They are, they are all sinful people. The father is guilty of favoritism. The brother, the, the, the eleven sons are guilty of jealousy and hatred. Now that was caused by their father. Yes, yes, that's that's correct. So the father's sin is favoritism, causing the the brothers to sin in hate, in jealousy and hatred. Okay. It can happen. Okay. <laughs> but if the father has not shown the favoritism, their brother wouldn't have committed the sin. I know. Am I? You see, the, the strange thing is that it does not depend on how, who caused. It depends on whether you obey God. Okay. God says, love your enemy. 
So even though the father caused you to sin, you are not supposed to exercise hatred and jealousy. You're supposed that to I wanted. Hold yourself. That, okay. <laughs> that I wanted the answer. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was blessing. Yeah. So the big picture is this. We have a lot of cause, causation factors causing us to sin. Your boss oppress you. You want to take revenge against your boss. That is your sin. You want to take revenge. But you say, I have a reason to take revenge because the boss yeah. is oppressive towards me. I have a reason to hate him. Okay. God says, no, you do not have a reason to hate him. My law is that you love your enemies. Even though he's your enemy, he's oppressive to you, you must forgive him. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the second part is that she liked, uh, second part of the story, the end, she lied for her boss. Could you, would you have uh, given that this uh, article, which um, which uh, given to us the last moment. Uh, you see the 79% is supporting staff has, uh, in order to save the boss, in order to save their job, they lied. Yes. What I understood, is that correct, love? Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay. So now I, now the, I would like to answer the Reverend Bo's answer. Believers normally, in order to get passport here in Bhutan, in order to get the ID card, they have to fill up compulsory a form. One form is versatile, they have to fill up. And their form, religion is must. If they are right in the blank religion, Buddhism, we can get it, nothing problem. If they are right, this Christian, so the <laughs> problem is start with the Christian when they write it. So even they ask us to write Buddhism. One who insists on writing the Christian will, they will not take action, but they will keep on pending. These are the consequences here. So do you think, should I write the Buddhism? The question is that, should I write Buddhism? <laughs> I think you the Reverend, Reverend Go Go. Tang is the exception. <laughs> I, I, I think you will know the answer, my brother. It's Thank already you. in uh, in one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not what? No. Oh. <laughs> that is the that is otherwise I don't have any problem getting my visa, no. getting my green card. You you just do what you have to do, the Lord will take care of the rest. Thank you. I mean, I mean it, it's 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 that's just as simple. And remembering this now that all these circumstances and people that give you trial and uh, persecution and so on, they are all divine instrument. They are all in God's hands. The Thank hearts you. Of the, the hearts of the king are also in God's hands. Okay. Amen. He set up one, he set up one and so on the fall. And and uh if you don't have to come out, you don't have to come out, just let the Lord's will be done. There's always uh different things you can do by the grace of God. But as long as your heart is clear, the Joseph, yes, he was a prisoner, but he was a chief prisoner. Okay, he was uh the, the servant there, he was the best of all servants. So whatever we do, it just be the best and as effective we can wherever God places us. Well, you don't have to come out to West Bengal anywhere to learn. You know, you can still Amen. zoom up with us with a Zoom and we can still interact one another in so many other ways. All right? Thank you. So uh, uh, don't lie just because of that. <laughs> ah, okay. Thank you. My brother. Thank you. Okay, those are eternal truth. Now remember, learn to look it from God's point of view. See the big picture. God is in control. Okay? Circumstances Amen. and people. And that will Amen. give you what we call perspective of life. All right? In all my ways, I commit to him. He will direct my path. All right? Then he will give you, secondly, patience. Patience means what? Well, don't feel guilty about it. Don't push. Don't manipulate people and so on. Just allow God to work in heart. And then he allow you perseverance. 
All right, no quitting. Just uh, apply, no quitting. Trust God to work things out. He wants it, he opens door. If not, he closes door. The Bible tells us he closes door, he opens door, okay? And then just leave it today. You're doing Thank very you. well, my brother. You're doing very Thank well. Thank you. Thank the you. Lord will bless you then. All right. Thank you, Lord. Okay, amen. Mayhem, what about you, my brother? Uh, Mayhem stone, yeah. Mayhem always have a good uh, word of wisdom. You have to us. unmute yourself, Mayhem. Mayhem. Mayhem, unmute yourself. Mayhem, unmute yourself. He can't, is it? Yeah, you unmute yourself. Can you unmute yourself? Your... Un unmute yourself, Mayhem. Your speaker. Bibun, can you unmute everyone? Okay, I'll do that. You unmute mm. everyone. Yeah. I'll do that. Mm. Uh, that, that, uh, uh, Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Well, first of all, I would like to thank our uh, Professor Lim uh, for your uh, word of wisdom. I can say so because uh, you have taught uh, very wonderful lessons. Uh, Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, because whenever you uh, give a lecture, it enters directly inside our heart from our mind inside here and it will you know it will um uh compel us to think ourselves it will uh, rebuild us when we speak uh, myself i was relating so many things so maybe many of you have done some um, same thing so i just want to thank you uh, and uh, uh, as we have learned so many things uh, the one thing i would like to point out uh, that is very important, which is, you said, uh, obedient and faithful to us, the God, is very important. Yes. And throughout the sessions, uh, I have uh, found one word, obedient and faithful to us, the Lord, uh, which brings, uh, which changes the life of Joseph. Yes. So that is very important and very, very strong word. I remember it because I remember when uh, he had a faith on God, he was obedient and when he was faithful to God. And you know, God allows him to keep away from all those sins, things and all those things. Uh, yes. and finally, you know, God has lifted up to him and he has changed his positions. God has done all the favor things on him. So that's wonderful uh, statement. And this is one of the greatest blessing uh, I can I can say that I have discovered today. Okay. And uh, uh, I think this is uh, where everybody we need to follow uh, because we need to be obedient. We need to be faithful to God, no matter whatever the situations, because our God is in control. And that is uh, the greatest blessing I received today. I want to thank you once again. Thank you so much, sir. Praise Looking the Lord. Again in the second session. Yeah. Anybody else? Hello, good evening, good everybody. Evening. Uh, can I speak? Yes, yes. Jone, Pastor Juni. Juni, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Good evening to everyone. Uh, good evening, Dr. Dr. Go. And uh, good evening to our professor also. Thank you for the very nice and wonderful lesson tonight. Uh, praise God for that. I am really blessed uh, in our uh, subject about the life of Joseph. Uh, I, I saw in... Uh, I saw in Jacob's life that Jacob, what I saw in Jacob's life that is that he is not a good role model. And then uh, to his children. And the principle of modeling is children copy us. And uh, another thing uh, I learned is that uh, Joseph shows favoritism 
and uh, why because jo uh, uh, jacob shows favoritism why because because of jacob's reaction uh, he cried and he refused uh, not to be comforted right yes and then uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, god is uh, breaking the heart of jacob yes uh, when uh, when when jacob uh, knew that uh, joseph uh, died uh, he break his heart yes but but praise god uh, jacob passed the test and also joseph uh, he passed the test and uh, also uh, everyone of us like uh, jacob and like joseph we have uh, uh, problems because of sin we have trials and testing but praise god uh, he gave us assurance that if we have faith in god if we trust god all the time we can also pass the test yes thank you thank you yeah. let me just add a word here jacob started bad he told lies to isaac to get the best blessing and therefore there was trouble in his life he had to run away to haran and then god also punished him because Laban also tricked Jacob into marrying Leah. Yeah, so the trick that Jacob played on on Isaac was backfired against Jacob when Laban tricked Jacob to marry Leah instead of Rachel. So sin begets sin. Your sin will find you out. All right. But because of all this trouble, all this sin that Jacob had in the beginning, he faced many trouble later on. And his, you look at his life, a lot of tragedy. And then at the end, the worst trouble. He believed that Joseph died. His most beloved son, Joseph, he thought was eaten up by a wild beast. And then he had to be grieving for the rest of his life. So that is how God breaks us down if we sin. And then Amen, he finally Amen. realized that Joseph was alive, prime minister of Egypt. Yeah, because now God lifted up Jacob after Jacob learns and has went through all the trouble that God has chastised him. God lifted up Jacob. See, Joseph is alive. He's the prime minister. So that is the lesson for us. Okay. Look at Joseph. He never sinned. So, my team on the day my team we are living as if we are not going to die. No. The truth is, the truth of the matter is. What happened? Uh... Sandeep, Sandeep, unmute yourself. <coughs> Good evening. Yeah, amuse yourself. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Yes, good evening. Uh, thank you very much to our lecturer, uh, Lempin. And uh, good evening, everyone, to, to all who join this uh, lecture tonight. I have just the one and a simple question, uh, sir. Yes. And uh, Joseph become, uh, still become a prime minister in Egypt without passing through his sufferings and uh, uh, imprisonment. That is my uh, uh, question without passing or experiencing suffering uh, and uh, well imprisoned. he suffered he suffered in prison because he has no freedom he can he cannot go outside he is deprived of his freedom although he is the chief prisoner he 
he he managed the prisoners. He does not have freedom. So in that mm. way, he's suffering. Mm -hmm. Right? And he cannot do the things that you and I can do. Go to the streets, go to the shop and buy things, go and talk to his friends. He cannot do that. He's a prisoner. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. And his Thank food, you. the food is prison food. It's not, he cannot go to the shop and, and have good food. He cannot. His family cannot cook for him. He has to eat prison food. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, no. Yes, Emmanuel. Question, Good evening, sir. Good evening. I have a question here. Yes. Uh, my question is, can we really blame Jacob, the father, of what he did to Joseph, making a beautiful coat of many colors. Can we blame Jacob? Okay. I think okay. I think the problem was in the hearts of the brothers, not what Jacob did to okay. Joseph. The story tells us that Jacob favors. Joseph. Yeah, you look, you read the Bible story. So favoritism is a sin. You can, like Joseph, you can make a nice coat for Joseph and you can make nice coats for all your other sons. That will yeah. be in the part fact. of In the part of Jacob, it is his right to give more love to Joseph because Joseph was his second youngest son so i think the problem is the hearts of the brothers not of what they have seen to joseph which has a uh, a uh, beautiful uh color uh, co a coat of many colors well do you do you think that jacob favors joseph yes of course because yeah. joseph was his Youngest son, second to the youngest son. And uh, I believe the, so, the problem is the brothers, their hearts. Well, so everybody can favor the younger son and disregard all the other children. Not necessarily, but in the case of that story. Well, uh, that's what the Bible teaches us, that we should not have favoritism among our children. Yeah, and uh, that story tells us why we should not, why Jacob should not favor uh, Joseph. That beautiful quote is shown as a negative example that he, that Jacob made a beautiful quote only for Joseph and not the other children because he's the younger son. Yes. And according to the Bible, that is favoritism and is wrong. That is meant to be a negative example for us. So how to overcome that wrong? What Jacob should do is he should give the same code to everybody, even though he likes Joseph more. Okay, he's the youngest and you, you kind of like the youngest, right? I, I understand, I perfectly understand. I see many of my uncles, they all like the youngest grandson. Very natural, very natural to like, to like the youngest child. Very natural. Even my father, he likes my youngest sister. Youngest. Very natural. But that unfortunately made me very jealous. Why does my father like my younger sister? Why does he not like me? Why does he go and fetch my sister from school? But he never fetched me from school. So that is what happens. We start to compare and say, my, my father likes her, fetch my sister from school, but never fetch me. Bring her to a nice restaurant for lunch and dinner, never bring me to lunch and dinner. Buy her many gifts and presents, never buy me gifts and presents. That is the problem. Yes. Sir, do you, do you believe that 
uh, what make jealousy of of his brothers is only the coat of many colors. Do you believe? Maybe maybe Jacob give people of you know talking to jo to, talking to Joseph a special talking every day. So is that the uh, coat of many colors only that brought uh, jealousy for them? Do you believe? Okay, I mean, Mr. Um, Manuel, I, I yes, uh, I think the the principle here is not about the rope. The principle here is about favoritism. In other words, you favor one person more than the others. You treat one person, you treat one person better than all the other people. Why do you do that? Because you like that person. So the Bible is teaching us not to have favoritism. So the code is just an example. The, okay, okay. Joseph's code is just an example. The, the, the principle here is against favoritism. You must, the Bible is teaching us not to favor one person compared to the rest. You must treat everybody fairly. Yeah, that's, that's the principle in the Bible. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can I have maybe one last question? Sir. Yes. Sir. Uh, yeah. I have one question about the color of uh, the coat. Okay. Um, usually, we people, we are a track of colors. And uh, in biblical uh, uh, meaning, uh, is there any uh, significance, a uh, biblical significance with the uh, different colors of the coat given to Joseph? I think it just means that Joseph has a very beautiful coat. He has a coat that has many beautiful color, just now you saw in the video, whereas his brothers do not have beautiful coat. They're all wearing uh, working clothes. Not mm. clean, not beautiful, not colorful, just dull color. Uh, yeah, right. I, <laughs> I <Yeah>. thought, <laughs> I am thinking that there are many colors. <laughs> yeah. Color the coat. Okay. Okay, Sigi, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you for all your questions. Uh, Reverend Go, do you have anything to um, say before we end? <laughs> what is great, uh, brother Olympic? If you have to leave, uh, go ahead, my brother. I know. Okay. Right. Please excuse me. I have okay. to go. Okay. And I'll leave you to Reverend Go. And yes. brother okay. there, there might be bye -bye. something else. Thanks, thank brother. You.